Hey, it's Mike with a Y, and you're listening to My Reality Recap. Today I'm here with James Wallington from CW's Capture. Hey James, thanks so much for calling in. Of course, thank you for having me. Oh, no problem. So you were on Capture alongside your sister, Rebecca, and you guys were the Lime team. What made you guys first try out for the show? Funny enough is I'm a huge reality TV fan. So when I moved out to LA six years ago, I was 20 years old and I know that they had changed the age limit for Survivor and I started applying and I applied for Survivor. I did phone interviews for a season or two and then Amazing Race. I was in the casting process with my mom for another season or two and nothing ever seemed to really work out that I was just kind of at that point where I was ready to throw in the towel and say, why me? Like, why am I not getting on one of these shows? I want the adventure. And I went to a job, um, interview at a casting office in uh, Hollywood that just kind of turned out to be more of like this laid back interview where they were just interviewing me for possible shows to be on. And one of them happened to be at the time the show was called the hunt and it turned out to be captured in the long run. And then one thing led to another and we were filming the show three months later. Wow. Yeah, so it kind of worked out the way it was supposed to. And, you know, I'm a firm believer that everything happens the way it should. And I guess it was fate that the missing puzzle piece was my sister all along because she's just as good at TV as anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys were great on TV. I loved watching you. Thanks. What would you, yeah, no problem. If you were to sum up this whole experience being on Capture, what would you have to say about it? If I had to sum it up, uh, that's so many words come to mind and so many emotions I feel because it was a dream come true. It's something that I've been waiting for for years, ever since I started learning about reality television at the age of 13. So it was a dream come true in that regard. Do I wish that, you know, it would have been more on a grand scale of like Survivor of the Amazing Race? Absolutely, because it was such a good show. And I think it definitely was underrated in the realm of reality TV. But for the most part, even though we didn't win, the money, I felt like I was a winner because not only did I cross off something from my bucket list, which it takes, you know, years for a lot of people to do, I walked away with so many strong friendships that I never would have had otherwise if it wasn't for the opportunity of capture. So it was one of those bittersweet experiences that I wouldn't trade in for the world. What would you say the hardest part was being out there? Because when I try to explain people what the show is, I don't know if this is good to say or not, but it reminded me of the Hunger Games a little bit. Like you guys were like in teams and you guys were out in the wilderness and trying to find each other. So what would the hardest part be or what was the hardest part for you out there? It's definitely okay if you say it's the Hunger Games because I think that is the white elephant in the room. A lot of people thought that and that was the way it was presented to us during the casting process. It was like the real life Hunger Games It's the closest you could ever get without killing anyone because we voted each other out. So, (laughs) yeah, it was definitely like the Hunger Games meets Survivor. If they had a love child, it would definitely be Capture. And the hardest part of the experience, you know, not eating a lot of food, surprisingly for me, wasn't the hardest part. I think the hardest part was just the physicality of it all. I don't think going into it, we really knew how to train or prepare ourselves. I completely cut out a lot of sugar for my diet, like at least a month prior to filming. So it was easier for me to adjust to the bland diet that we did have on the show. But the physicality of it, when you're running through the woods and being reckless with your body for the course of four to six hours a day, it does a lot of wear and tear mm-hmm. and damage on your muscles and your skin. And there's a lot of girls from the show still that I talk to that have like scars and scrapes from just thorns, oh, wow. and all sorts of little things in the woods that can cause harm. But that was definitely the hardest part was the physical element of the show. So are there any secrets from the show that didn't make it on the TV that you want to like spill to my listeners? Secrets that didn't make the show. I think one of the big things people would be shocked to know is that for the sabotages that were on the show, you know, those didn't come that easily. You know, you didn't just walk up to a pole in the middle of the forest and touch it and claim the power to sabotage another team. You had to work for it. And maybe it was just because of the amount of time in each episode and editing purposes, they didn't show it. 
But, you know, I was proud of my sister and I because, you know, we were a very underestimated team and people thought we were on the weak side, which is what our strategy was going into it. We wanted to play the weak card. But the sabotage is you had to do physical challenges that put you at risk of being, you know, on the hunt team's radar. Because if you stopped for more than three minutes, your alarms would start going off Mm -hmm. and it would trigger a signal to the hunt team that, they could see that uh, see you on their GPS. So you put yourself at risk of being captured, but when it comes to survival in the game and you have an opportunity to knock out a big physical competitor, you're going to act on those opportunities. And to be honest, not a lot of people really did. You saw the purple team do it in the, the third episode, and then after that, Rebecca and I did too. And I think it kind of set the tone for the rest of the game because everyone was like, you know, if you're going to win this game, you cannot just rely on the physical aspects of it. Right. There's a lot of wit and strategy that comes into it. So I think people would be a little surprised to know that there were physical challenges and tasks that took up to at least 15 minutes. So you definitely put yourself at risk of being captured. So that's why Rebecca and I took a lot of pride in what we were able to accomplish because we were not afraid to take the risks that were necessary to make in order to propel ourselves further in the competition. So that's definitely one secret. Um, I think another secret would be there was a huge alliance that never really made television that was um, formed probably day one between the green team, which was Kareem and Antoine, and my sister and I, we were really close with those boys. And right off the bat, we had a pack just because we were both, you know, a shade of green. <laughs> so we had this alliance that just kind of evolved over the next few days. And we were able to pull in the gold team and the white team. So we had a really strong core. Like Rebecca and I are like, you know, we're aligned with three of the strongest teams. Eventually, they're going to take each other out at some point in the game. So we thought we had ourselves in a pretty good Alliance, And not only was it an alliance, but we really formed strong friendships with these teams, but they never showed it on the show, which I thought was interesting because those alliances did factor in a lot of the votes after the first episode. Mm -hmm. And they are the teams that voted to keep Rebecca and I in on the episode we went home in. So it was an alliance that I wish would have made the show because we were a lot more strategic than I think the show showed. Hmm. Interesting. Well, thanks for sharing that with us. Of course. There's a lot more, but, you know, I don't know still what I'm allowed to share, so I'm kind of like, oh, I'll keep my mouth shut for now, and then maybe if we interview again later on, I'll be able to tell you more. <laughs> so if there was another season of Capture, would you go back on? Good question. If there was another season of Capture, which is a long shot in hell, let's be honest, <laughs> I think it's one of those things that is a one-hit wonder. Um <laughs> I would totally do it again in a heartbeat. Rebecca even too has said to me, like, if they ever brought it back and they were like, hey, will you guys go back? I think Rebecca would do it again too. Um, Just because now that we know what we know and how the game is played, um, we would have a little better understanding of how to prepare. So, yeah, absolutely. It's one of those things that if you got the opportunity to do it again, you're crazy enough to say yes, even though you were miserable 90% of the time. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Which I think goes to say for a lot of people who are on, like, Survivor, which is another survival show, those people are crazy enough to want to do it again because it's not really about the money. You can say it's about the money all you want, but it really is just the craving and the need for adventure and that adrenaline rush and the strategy and the mind games. If you're into that stuff, you're going to love every second of it, even if you don't win the money. Right. So this show came out in 2013. What have you been up to since then? Well, first off, I cannot believe that it's been since 2013. It's already been two years, which is insane how fast time has flown by. I'm still in L.A., and I'm you know, doing the grind here and trying to make things work and continue to pursue other opportunities. I have been very fortunate to be an on-camera host for After Buzz TV, where I recap reality television shows. I do the Amazing Race after show and the Survivor after show, because as you know, I'm a super fan of both. Mm -hmm. So I've been able to do that, and I've been able to do a lot of reality TV charity events. I got to go to Orlando last summer for uh, Give Kids the World charity, and then I've done Reality Rally for the last two years 
which takes place here in Temecula, which you got to go to this year, which is super awesome. I did. So um, I'll definitely be doing that again in 2016. So, so it's definitely been fun to kind of use the status of having been on a reality show to give back and make a difference and impact lives of people who are in need. So that's probably been the one thing I've loved the most as far as doors that have opened since my experience. But other than that, I'm, you know, still just a normal guy living in L.A. trying to make his dream reality again. And now that the reality TV dreams on the side, it's like, what do I do now? So I'm just figuring it out and enjoying life as I go by because, you know, it's an adventure in itself. So, well, I wish you the best of luck in whatever life throws at you. I'm sure you're going to come out. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. You know, it's just. I love to travel, so I'm trying to pursue as many traveling opportunities as I can. And when opportunities do present themselves to me, I want to have this mentality of just do it and say yes. And, you know, you should never let an opportunity slip by. So that's just one of those things that I've been trying to do is that I'll seize every opportunity that I can um, from this point moving forward. And speaking of moving forward, let's just jump right into Survivor. This episode, yes, <laughs> this episode was so good, I thought. So the beginning of it, Jeff Probst shows up to the Takeo camp, and he wakes up Terry in the middle of the night. He tells Terry that his son has been hospitalized, and that the wife and doctor feel like it's serious enough that Terry should be there with him. So Terry just instantly says, yep, I gotta go. And this was like a survivor first, because usually people have like quit the game because they couldn't handle the elements, or they're medically evacuated, or even on All Stars, Jenna Maraska felt like her mom was dying and then so she left and then her mom ended up dying too this is the first time they actually gave them information about their family so what do you think about that my heart sunk like i felt so terrible for terry and you know as Cass said this is like worse than a medevac to be able to get news from your family because you're so wrapped up in the game Mm -hmm. that of course, you have your family on your mind, but you become so accustomed to everything around you and the environment that you're in, the elements that are around you that, you know, you're just so focused on the tasks at hand. So when news is brought to you from the real world outside of the Survivor game, it's like a huge, like, whoa, like, let's pause for a second and remember, like, life is important. There's so much more beyond this, which we did see Savage say at the reward challenge, you know, Survivor is one thing. We can love it to our core, but family is beyond this. And so I, my heart definitely went out to Terry, and I can't imagine being woken up in the middle of the night and being given such, you know, such news regarding my son. And so it was definitely, I felt bad, you know, I felt terrible for Terry. Well, would you have wanted to know the information if you were out there? Because I remember back in All Stars, Big Tom said that if somebody gave him news, he didn't want to know about it. He was like, this is my job. I got to do this. And then once the game is done, then I'll go and figure life out after that. And so that always like stuck with me because I was like, if I ever get on Survivor or a show, do I want to know what's happening or do I want to focus on the game first? Right. You're right. Big Tom did say that in All Stars and he was more like, you know, when, when I'm done with this, then we'll take care of it. But for me, I think if I was in that situation, if it's my immediate family, like if it was a grandparent, a mom, dad, or a sibling, then 100% I would want to know about it. I mean, no offense to my extended family, but that right. would be like reason for me to drop everything and be like, I'm going home. I need to be with my family. Because it's not it's not just about me at that point. It's about your family. Because, you know, when you do go through such a, a loss, it's good to be with that support system. It's not just about you being there. It's about being there for each other. So I, I would want to know personally if something was happening to my mom, dad, sister, and let alone mm-hmm. if I had a kid, of course I would right. want to know. So, right. And the same thing would be for me. Like I just want like my immediate family, anybody else. I mean, I still love you, but I got to like focus on the game. So, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so they get to the reward challenge and Jeff tells everybody to drop their buffs and it's a tribe switch. And they went from three tribes back down to two. And so it's a KO tribe consists of Cass, Spencer, Wu, Abby, Kelly, Wigglesworth, Sierra, and Savage. And the Bayon tribe is Jeremy, Steven, Tasha, Kelly, Wentworth, Joe, Keith, and Kimmy. On Takeo, Wu, Abby, Savage, Cass, and Sierra create an alliance. On the Bayon tribe, Joe is wanting to keep Kelly, Wiggle- Kelly Wentworth, 
but Steven wants to get Joe out because Joe is the golden boy and Steven missed the opportunity to get out the golden boy his first season. So what did you think about Steven's heartbreaking moment? Because he like broke down into tears and we didn't get to see much of him do that before. Well, if anyone watched my After Buzz show for Survivor, I pretty much laid it down thick. And I said it was probably the most uncomfortable moment of the show for me. I, uh, I understand where his emotions were coming from, but at the same time, I'm, I've been very disappointed in Steven's gameplay this season. There's no way in hell I can see someone like Steven winning Survivor's second chance. Um, I understand why he's so eager to take out the Golden Boy because of his experience on Survivor Token Chains, but at the same time, like, I feel like he needs to let go of his previous game and focus on the cards that are being dealt to him now. And if he doesn't know how to adapt, and at this point, 16 days in, and if he hasn't adapted, then I just don't see him doing well. And Cass is adapting pretty well. I am loving Cass this season. I think she's doing so good. I'm thoroughly impressed with Cass and her gameplay this season. I mean, I personally loved her in Kagayan, and I think that people didn't give her enough credit. Sure, See, I loved her villain. in Kagayan too. I just, I just yeah. always loved her. She was just very aggressive in her gameplay, and she knew she had to do what she had to do to make herself survive. And, you know, you can't fault her for that. It's not like she went out of her way with any malicious intent to screw everyone over. It was, I'm here to play a game, and if I have to be aggressive about it and not make friends, then so mm-hmm. be it. But for to see her kind of her big theme this season for second chance is she uses the word evolve a lot. And I definitely see Cass evolving more. She's definitely shown her vulnerable side by being more emotional with her tribe mates and let alone with the viewers in her private interviews. Mm-hmm. And I like Comcast a lot more, but I'm a little nervous for next week because we see in the previews that Chaos Cast is back. And I think that is going to be what might be her ultimate downfall in the long run. Well, hopefully not. Hopefully she'll make it to the final three again, and I can be all happy. But going yeah. to this immunity challenge, it was the food eating challenge, which everybody loves but hates to watch too. And so the contestants, or the castaways this time, had to eat two tarantulas, two giant water beetle, a pig snout, deep fried frog, pig brain, scorpion, and balut, which is a duck embryo. If you could pick, <laughs> if, if you could pick any of those to eat, which one would you have wanted to eat? Oh, with doubt, it would be, without a doubt, it would totally be deep fried frog. That seems like the easiest food option on the entire menu. And you saw Kelly Wigglesworth, she just completely shoved it in her mouth and devoured it like a beast. It's like she lives off that. It seems so natural to her. So I definitely would have done deep fried frog because you know that is kind of like a delicacy in some places, not necessarily a delicacy, but in America, some people actually eat frog. So... I don't think that would have been too much of like a culture shock in that moment. See, I probably would have picked the, picked the pig brain just because I felt like it wasn't much to it because I have a hard time eating stuff. There's like old videos of me on YouTube of me trying to eat like hummus and carrots and I'm like struggling to eat it. So I just felt like the pig brain, <laughs> like the pig brain texture is so like nothing that I could just like swallow it and just get it down quickly. I th- I think the worst part, well, the worst foods would have been like a tarantula or oh, yeah. the water beetle. Anything that you would bite into that has an initial crunch, uh-huh. but then when you get to mm-hmm. the middle and the thick of it, it's juicier. That would have been a huge issue for me. I'm not good with food like that to begin with, let alone if the food on the plate is looking at me before I eat it. <laughs> ooh, my mind goes places and my imagination runs wild. So. I have a problem when my food looks at me. (laughs) Well, we saw Cass and Sierra both struggle, so that ended up making the ban team win immunity. And so Takeo had to go to Tribal Council. And on Takeo, Spencer and Cass are both on it, and they both hate each other from their previous season. And we have that five-person alliance of Savage, Abby, Wu, Cass, and Sierra. But Savage wanted everybody to to tell everybody else that they're voting out Sierra and Sierra was like "Uh uh-uh that's not cool and so her Abby and Cass started to work everybody to try to get Wu out and I thought it was really interesting to see Cass in the middle of do I get out Spencer my enemy or do I get out Wu and stick true to my alliance so do you think she made the right choice because in the end Cass did decide to vote out Wu and Wu was blindsided. 
I definitely think, and I know a lot of people disagree, but I definitely think Cass made the right move in that moment. Because moving forward, I think that if you're already aware of the type of player Spencer is, then there's nothing going to be much of a shock. And it seems like Spencer's been on the bottom for a while, so it doesn't mean that Spencer's not going to be on the bottom even moving forward. So I think Cass was thinking moving forward, if Spencer's on the bottom now, he'll continue to be on the bottom moving forward. So it'll continue to be easier to get him out when the time is necessary. And she did say, like, you know, I could get Spencer out now, but is there better use for him in this moment? And I think she sees that opportunity saying, this is an extra vote for me to make another big move to go against Wu, who not only is a challenge threat, but Sierra posed a really good point where it was like, Savage is original Bayonne and Wu is not. So why is he more loyal in this moment to Wu and saying that I'm the vote? It just didn't make sense. So Sierra, I totally commend her because she did make a huge move Mm -hmm. and I loved every second of it. So I think Cass, I think Cass did what she needed to do and positioned herself in a great position. And I thought it was funny that the fate of two of her former Kagayan cast members were in her hands. I did too. That was perfect. Yes. But I think that moving forward, Spencer might be the reason why Cass ends up going home, which I would love to see as mean as that is, but it would make great TV if Spencer is the one that ultimately outlasted Cass this time around. Uh Uh-huh. So next week we have the merge and it's going to shake everything up again. Who do you want to see win and who do you think is going to win? Who do I want to see win the entire season? Yes, the entire season. Ooh, oh, I'm rooting for a lot of people, which is a first. Like, there's a lot of people I would not mind seeing win. I wouldn't mind seeing Jeremy win. I don't think I would mind seeing Tasha win. I wouldn't mind seeing Spencer win. I mean, Kimmy, I don't think she could ever win, but I wouldn't mind (laughs) seeing Kimmy win because I'm an old school lover at heart. Mm -hmm. So, and Sierra, I think she has what it takes to win, um, but we haven't really seen much of her. So I don't know where her head is at really in the game. But... If I had to pick one person that I'm 100% rooting for, it's totally Spencer. Um, I love Spencer. I think that he doesn't get enough credit, and I don't really understand a lot of the Spencer hate. I enjoy watching Spencer. He's the cat with nine lives, and I think that's enough of a compelling game for me as a viewer to stay interested in what he's doing. It's like, is he going to survive another episode, or is he going to be able to like do something that messes his game up? So... And you know, if I'm rooting for a girl, 100% I'm rooting for Kelly Wentworth. She's proven herself so much this season now mm-hmm. that her dad is not in the equation. Right. And she was the first person to find an idol, let alone do it with ninja skills. So my top two <laughs> are definitely Spencer and Kelly Wentworth. I think those two have everything that they need to win second chance. They have evolved the most, in my opinion, from what we've been able to see in the first few episodes. I agree. I am rooting for Kelly Wentworth to pull it out for everyone, too. I love her. (laughs) So how can all of my listeners find you on social media so they can talk to you about Survivor and The Amazing Race and anything else they want to talk about? Anything about reality television all the time, every day. Um, You can find me on Twitter at James Wallington and Instagram at James.Wallington. And then I've also been doing a lot of YouTube lately, which I forgot to mention, but I YouTube with my boyfriend, Will. And then I also have a channel where I YouTube all of my travels called Where's Wallington. So you could probably find some YouTube videos if you just Google and YouTube my name, I guess. And I will put all of his links up on my website so all of you can go check him out. So thank you so much for joining me, James. This was a lot of fun. Thank you for having me, and I hope to see you at Reality Rally next year. It's been too long. Yeah, I know. I plan on it. Perfect. And I want to thank all of you for listening to this podcast. If you like what you heard today, please click that subscribe button and give this podcast a five-star rating. That'll make me feel really good inside. And I want to keep the conversation going with all of you. Tweet me at Michael with the Y or hashtag MYRR to let me know all of your thoughts and feelings about Survivor Second Chances. You can keep up with me on social media. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Michael with a Y, and that is spelled exactly as it is on here. Don't forget to smile, and remember, glasses are sexy.